Hey everyone, it is John Schneider and Eric Faldi with the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Uh, here for the week of, well, I guess this is late August, early September. Yeah. We're not really going to commit to a date depending on <laughs> what time this actually ends up getting. It's almost uh, September. Getting posted. But this show, we are going to be talking about direct drive kits, specifically the direct drive kits for the Ender 3 and the Ender 5. So just a little heads up, we are going to be giving away one of these kits, one to someone who comments in the uh, YouTube comment section by September 6th and someone who comments on, in the Facebook comments on the Facebook version of this video. If, uh, if you're an audio listener, just go to the YouTube and comment there. It's, we just don't, we don't curate the comments on uh, Podbean or wherever it is. Yeah, so it's a little more difficult for us to track that. Um, yeah, I mean this kit, just kind of a little bit of background. So why would you want a direct drive kit on, uh, on a 3D printer like this? Um, if some of you are not familiar with the Creality, uh, the Creality 3D printers, um, for example, the uh, the Ender 3, the CR10, all variations of the CR10, um, and the Antivo tarantulas. Uh, that's right, Antivo tarantulas, and then also the Ender 5s. They use what's called a, a Bowden-style extruder. So that is where the motor is some distance away from the uh, away from the hot end. So it's not mounted on the x-axis gantry, but it's mounted some distance away. And then you have a PTFE Bowden tube. Tube that goes from the uh, that goes from the extruder to the hot end. Now the problem is you can see there's a bit of a distance between where the uh, where the motor for the extruder is and where the hot end is. And especially with the stock PTFE tube that comes with these printers, there's a there's a lot of room for slop. So you'll sometimes hear that Bowden style extruders need to have their uh, need to have their retraction rate turned way up. So where on a direct drive 3D printer you may have let's say one to two millimeter retraction where it pulls the filament back out of the hot end to relieve that pressure. On a Bowden style extruder, you're looking at anywhere from seven to 15 millimeters, depending on, uh, really depending on the tolerances of your PTFE tube. How long the tube is. And the quality of the connectors on both ends of that Bowden tube. Um, we've heard that uh, for some people, they're able to get much better print quality with a Bowden style extruder just by having better quality uh, push fit connectors. Um, or uh, something like Capricorn tubing. Which yep, is Capricorn tubing, which has a much tighter internal tolerance. And there's some other benefits to using something like Capricorn tubing, such as higher heat resistance and, uh, and higher lubricity. So there's less friction on the filament. Um, so you can get better 3D printing results just even with regular PLA if you're using a direct drive kit. But the, the big advantage to using a direct drive kit are materials that are either very brittle. So uh, I believe it's... Um, Oh, what is it? It's like filament foundry or something like that, okay. where it's a very heavy metal filled material where it really can only be fed directly in a straight path. I mean, that's not to say it couldn't go through a curve of a Bowden tube, but it'd be very difficult to yeah. do. And if you know anything about Bowden extruders, you know how fun it is to fish it out if it breaks inside, uh, I guess, past the drive gear. Yep, because then you've got to try and push another piece of filament past it. It's kind of like you get a ball stuck in a tree. All right, now I've got to throw another <laughs> yeah. ball at that tree to try and get it out. Okay, well, what happens if that one gets stuck? What happens yeah. if that piece of filament breaks off? Then, uh, and then as we've seen some Bowden tubes that have such poor tolerances on the inside that the, the two pieces of filament won't push each other, but they'll actually slide alongside of each other. Mm -hmm. So that causes a whole nother yeah. problem. Or you just have to take off the, the, the connector that goes onto the, onto the hot end, and that's yeah, you usually want it hot while you're pulling plastic out, so it's just it's just one of those one of those things. And again, with poor quality push connectors and Bowden tubes, sometimes you're not able to you're not able to get that connector to come off of the PTFE tube, and then you're stuck needing to run it the entire length of it. It, it can be it can be a headache, um, especially with the stock tubes. Um, another material that direct drive kits are very good for are flexible materials. Materials that when you push them, they're more like, they're more like wet noodles. They don't really maintain There's their There's an old their adage form. about rope. I'm not gonna fill in the rest, but <laughs> you guys can look it up if you want. Yeah, so it, again, the direct drive kit has some pretty major advantages. Now, there are some downsides to having a direct drive extruder over having a Bowden extruder. When you are having direct drive, that means that you're moving the motor to the gantry. You're moving it to where the hot end is. You're dramatically reducing the, reducing the distance from extruder to hot end, but you now have that extra mass on the, on the gantry. So when it's moving back and forth, if you're printing something at very high speed, you have a higher likelihood of there being residence, or excuse me, not residence, <laughs> resonance, or um, kind of that kind of that ghosting effect on your print. Um, again, that can happen if you are already printing a material at high speeds. For example, if you're printing something at 60, mil mi 60 millimeters per second, 
or no, 60 millimeters per minute, and then you go from Bowdoin to direct drive, you will see some artifacting that occurs. Um, some of that is just the limitation of the gantry system on these, on these low cost 3D printers. You're talking a $200, $300 3D printer kit. They're not going to be as rigid as something that has a, a proper linear rail in, in all three axes. So. Yeah, and then the things that we're discussing now about drawbacks, there are going to be some potential things on the horizon as far as uh, how to deal with them. Another one is weight, which you just talked about, but um, the, yeah, this this part is heavier right off the bat, and then the, the stepper motor, I think, if I looked, it was like 250 or 300 grams, which is a considerable amount of, a considerable amount of weight. So it's just, uh, you know, one or the other. It's kind of what you get. Right. So these kits, we've been, uh, we worked with Matthew Basaraba. Uh, so Matthew Basaraba, we actually met him through, through someone that we work with at 3D Fuel, uh, Carl Powell. So they both live in the same area in Alabama. Matthew Basaraba is a, uh, he's essentially a STEM teacher. And, and Matthew, if you're watching this and I'm getting something wrong, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to recall from memory here. Um, but he works in a, uh, like a STEM high school. So he teaches a wide variety of classes. Uh, all of his students, when they graduate high school, they're solid work certified. They're now going to be, uh, they're now going to be FANUC certified. So they're going to be able to go in and be programming these robotic arms and excellent job prospects. I wish every high school had, uh, every high school had an opportunity to take, uh, take a series of classes like they're able to do with Matthew. Um, but through doing this, he, he uses Ender 3s quite a bit and he was starting to see some of the limitations of the Bowden extruder and that's why he developed this kit and approached us asking if he, if he produced them, designed them, made modifications, would we be able to sell them and uh, make them available on our website through all of our different sales channels because we have a better direct connection with the, uh, with the 3D printing industry? And of course we said, yes, it's a great kit. Um, we like the fact that it's a kit that we don't really have to make any changes to. We do a little modification on the packaging, but that's about it. Now there have been some different design changes since he released the initial kit. And I've got a list of what some of those, uh, some of those changes have been. Um, so they, uh, they started off using regular aluminum and the hot end spacer was a different material. So now the hot end spacer is, uh, it's now, I believe it's all temp. So oh, it, has you're right. high t yep, it has high temperature resistance. I wrote peak, but I just knew it was high temp, whatever it was. Right. So he's actually 3D printing these pieces on a, uh, on a Stratasys dimension 3D printer using, uh, using all temp or sometimes called PEI. Uh, they've also changed to uh, it's changed to a new cable management system, which we don't know that we're the biggest fans of the change to this. So it has this uh, what what Eric is holding up right now. This is the current cable wrap system. It's difficult sometimes to get the uh, to get the cables to go in there. Sometimes the edges of this cable management are a little uh, a little sharp. Yeah. Um, I think did you guys design? Uh, did you and Andrew so design a a tool to make inserting those cables easier? We kind of easier? copied an existing thing where it uh, it will essentially lay. You know, it opens it up and then the cable goes in after it passes by. Um, I did try it. It didn't work as well as I was hoping. Um, but as you can see, like if you open it, it pinches tighter. It's kind of like a Chinese finger trap in a way. So it's a uh, it's. I actually did like the other one better. It was just like the typical like wire wrap, um, just like kind of like a almost a, like a shiny plastic, the, the, plastic, just the plastic binding that coil. you see on like a, a booklet or something or something like that. But right. Yeah. So this isn't my favorite, but after doing it a couple of times, it, it's not as bad. Um, the carriage has also changed a little bit, at least on the Ender 3 kit. Yes. So before it was this unanodized aluminum. It yep. now is this anodized red aluminum. Um, so let's see. It is. Uh, they've also the. The whole positions have not yes. the whole positions, but they're there's, actually there's they're, a new hole. Yes, there actually used one. to be there used to be an even smaller version of this at one point, but um, there was a modification to make it this current version so that it can be. Uh, it's got a new hole for a stepper motor, which allows the uh, allows for a BMG extruder from Bond Tech to be mounted when paired with an E3D hot end. I, th I think as long as it's not the stock one, I put that because that's what he does, and there's a there's an adapter for it. But it would work with something like I think the Mosquito. A lot of people want to do because yeah. it's lightweight. But yeah, pretty much the uh, these two screw holes are going to be where the BGM BMG. I always say BGM background music. Um, <laughs> sure. it, yeah, so that sits there. Otherwise, there wasn't one here. But if uh, if you wanted to do that yourself, I mean, it's going to be the same distance from from that. If you have any sort of CNC skill, it's not threaded, so you can tap whatever that's a plus. Uh, whatever thread you need. Yeah, but it's not threaded, so you don't need to. Gotcha. That's not a threaded hole, so yeah. Otherwise, so, it's got uh, we got. I mean, John's got the lasers, so we got some laser marking on here, which is nice, and you can kind of kind of see it um, when it's on there. But it's kind of it's more just for for fun. Yeah, it's aesthetics. It looks cool. 
Um, there are some other mods that we know work with this uh, work with this direct drive extruder upgrade. Um, so, Eric, do you actually want to walk through some of these? Because I know you've sure. been the one that's been talking with people who've done some of these upgrades. Yes. Yeah, so, if you've ever reached out to support, um, you'd usually be talking to John or Jake back when when Jake was more active. Um, I've been in there a little bit now, so I'm talking to some of you directly. Uh, one of the people was reaching out asking about the BGM extruder. A lot of people are interested in that because it's so lightweight. Um, he was saying, I, I, I have this idea, I want to put it on the printer, but uh, he wanted to use the stock hot end, which it, it, what he did was a little strange, but it, it looks like it'll work. And I think he actually reached out to Boss Araba about it. But pretty much what he did is he has another bracket or another adapter that sits up here. The uh, BGM sits up here, and then he has another push connector, which you could probably take out. But then pretty much it's just a little bit longer than it would be on this uh, this setup originally. And then, yeah, it's somehow just an adapter for an adapter, which, you know, you get the scaled... Uh, the oh, stack tolerances. Yeah, there, there we go. Um, so, but uh, he did reach out to Boss Raba. It sounds like he's going to make him an aluminum one. If you want that file, um, I think... His name is uh, Rather Be Flying. I don't know his real name, but that's what he's been calling himself. So I'm going to call him that. Um, if you want that file, I think he gave me permission to use it. I'm going to double check on that. But if you want it, um, just reach out and then we can try to get you that file. Otherwise, let me see. Um, so we were selling. I think we might get more, but uh, it's an a v, a E3D V6 adapter for the just the stock setup. And it actually works with this. It would be more weight because it's actually a pretty heavy part too. Right, uh, but for people that want to be using yeah. an E3D hot end versus the stock hot end that comes with the Creality 3D printers, it's a good opportunity to do that. That adapter also can work with just the stock mounting plate. You mm -hmm. don't need to be using direct drive, uh, the direct drive upgrade to utilize that up, that uh, the E3D mount. Um, like Eric said, we're currently out of stock on that, but we're planning on getting more in. Um, it looks like another uh, another modification that works with this kit is the Hero Me fan mod mm -hmm. from Andrew Soderberg. And that fan mod is actually recommended by Matthew Basaraba for uh, for when you're using an E3D hot end. Yeah, and there, there are a lot of versions of that too. Um, like for the, uh, someone had asked me about the CR20 or the CR20S, I forget. It's the one that has uh, BL Touch built in. And I, as far as I know, it's going to work with this, just looking at it. But if anybody has any uh, any comments about that, please let us know. Yeah, because as you, uh, if you get a kit and you you're not quite sure if it's going to work with uh, work with an upgrade, just shoot us a message, and usually we'll tell you buy the kit. If it all we ask is that if it does work with that mod, to please let us know because then we can add it to the list of compatible mods on the product description. And if it doesn't work, um, you can send the kit back, and we'll give you a full refund on it too. So it. We're not trying to make you be beta testers. It's just <laughs> that there are so many different other upgrades and mods available for the Creality 3D printers that it's challenging to be able to test every single one with this kit and to and to know for certain. Just yeah, too many printers. Right. So that way we can be kind of working together on uh, on this. And like I, I don't know if I made this very clear at the beginning, but the Ender 3 kit is compatible with the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, and I believe all of the CR-X printers, like CR10, CR20, CR10, and different the, variations. The only on it. difference with that, which I need to maybe do a little bit of digging on, is the length of how much wire you would need. Because in this kit, you do get an extension wire for the uh, extruder stepper motor. Because now that the extruder motor is not on the side of the printer, it's now mounted directly on the x-axis gantry, and it's going to be moving back and forth. You, we need that extra cable length to uh, to be able to reach the motor. So the the thing is with the CR10 and the TiVo Tarantula kit, it's two of these. And then someone said, what about the uh, well, the, I forget the S4. What are all the giant ones? Yeah, I mean they go up to basically a meter by a meter by. So a meter. that you'd need more Multiple than two of, of these. Those. I don't know how many. So again, if uh, if you need something like that, reach out to us. I've talked to someone and said, hey, if you need an extra one, I think we could just throw it in. So, or maybe just a slight upcharge. I think what we're going to do is add that as its own standalone product uh, product on the site. That way, if you need to add more extension cables, you're able to do that, so that you could effectively have an infinite cable length if you really needed yeah, to. That'd be uh, Kind of goofy, but you know, if that's what you want, we'll we'll sell it to you. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think. Oh, so future modifications to or future versions of this kit. This kit is always going to stay basically the same as it is, where you're going to be installing, reusing the uh, reusing the same motors. Um, you're also another thing to mention about this kit. You don't need to make any firmware modifications to it. So you're able to use stock firmware. Everything that you need to do this upgrade is contained in the kit, aside from tools. 
there, there could definitely be some firmware tweaks as far as speed, and um, I know I've seen people do other stuff just to try to deal with the ringing or the resonance, but otherwise you're mostly dealing with the retraction distance. Right, and those a lot of that stuff can be changed in the slicer. It doesn't need to be a firmware mod. Uh, there are going to be future different versions of this kit, though. One is uh, one is one that comes with a, a different stepper motor, so a pancake motor, so it's going to be smaller, less weight, and then also another version that would uh, that basically going to be the entire uh, the entire head, the, which has you know an extruder upgrade. Uh, so an aluminum extruder upgrade, the direct drive kit, different hot end, everything all contained in one piece that you just you slide the old one off the uh, the linear rail system or the V-slot rail system on the um, on the x-axis and you slide the new one on, connect cables, and then you're good to go. So we don't have a timeline or a price on when that's going to be available. So yeah. if you're looking at doing a direct drive kit, don't hold off waiting for that new uh, for that different version. It might version. be a little while. We're not sure if Boss Rob is going to be directly offering that, but we do have some contracts or some seller agreements. I shouldn't say contracts, but we have some seller agreements that uh, would allow us to get some of those uh, some of those components. So Right. Um, I think that's it on the kit fold. We're going to skip that last one. I think that was one he mentioned in person, but he did come to our shop one time. He has some oh, family right. from yep. Bismarck or Barnesville, if you're familiar with North Dakota. Yeah, Barnesville, layout. Minnesota, and yeah. then oh, Bismarck, Minnesota. North Dakota. I, th I thought Barnesville was... No, Barnesville is definitely Minnesota. My bad. I'm thinking... Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Whatever. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, as far as in-house, we're going to be doing a grand opening, a grand opening. It's, it's more like a, hey, we're here, we have a new location, and we have three printers that yeah. can print stuff on. Even though we've been in this physical location now for a little over a year, um, it's, yeah, this grand opening has been a long time coming. So Yeah, I think since last June, um, yeah, maybe, <laughs> something like that. Just like, just never made sense, and now we have time, and a date set, so we're going to stick yep. to it. Uh, a couple people that we want to thank. Yes, yeah, so wanna... I, I have a list. Um, a lot of people, not a lot, but enough recently that I wanted to mention it. People have been saying, hey, where's the podcast? Like, hey, I saw you guys did a podcast. And uh, Matt from Mayville, he's been really helping us out with some material testing too, so I appreciate that. And he's just always coming in and just being pleasant. So thanks, Matt. Um, somebody reached out on Instagram yesterday. That was uh, Rusty Tracy. He's an audio listener, so sorry. Um, about this episode, it's just... I mean, for the contest part of it. It's a really nice red. And then, more just, just to, I, tr I, tr I was thinking, oh, I gotta make sure I were descriptive about our stuff. Like, no, it, I, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, also, uh, a really four-year-old four old video, almost. It was the, uh, the short run manufacturing video. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had the guy from the Square, the Square Reader, the Square Saver, that's what it was called, right? Um, it's been four years, man. Uh, Chris, Chris <laughs> Milness, um, he made something so when, back in the day when you used the headphone jack on the iPad and you had the square reader, it would spin around. He made something where it would make it not spin. But uh, as you know about, you know, Apple and no headphone jacks anymore, that, that ended. But now he's still printing like Buddha statues and stuff for, for uh, conventions and he's keeping his, uh, his giant amount of Rep 2's printing still. So that was really nice to hear. Yeah. We don't know when the next show is going to be, but we're hoping that it's going to be soon. Uh, we hope that you like this new arrangement too. It's going to look better in the future. We're kind of it's still a work in progress, yeah. but kind of kind of minimum viable product here. So, but on behalf of myself, John Schneider, and Eric Faldi, thank you for watching another episode of the Fargo 3D Printing Show. To make sure you don't miss anything new that comes out, and I'm going to say it, Faldi, uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell. All that stuff that goes along with YouTube today. So don't don't forget uh, comment below if you want to win one of these. And if you live in it has to be lower 48 states, unfortunately. Yep. And uh, what when was the deadline again? September 6th. So Friday, September 6th. We're just gonna call it 11:59 p.m. So yep. not Saturday, but almost. All right. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah, no, I, I was like, I want to talk about so much other stuff, like, got to save it. Save it for next time.